By 1979, Pink Floyd had become a big name in the music industry. Their 1973 album, The Dark Side of the Moon, completely shattered any expectations, and has gone on to be named one of the greatest albums ever made. In 1977, after the release of their third concept album, Animals, the band embarked on the somewhat disastrous In the Flesh tour, which ended on July 6th of the same year in Montreal, Canada, after fans had disrespected the band and the venue, and even started a small riot which prevented the band from exiting. Other unfortunate incidents which had occurred at this concert include the now-famous spitting incident, in which bassist Roger Waters called a fan up to the stage, spit in his face, and dropped him back into the crowd. Waters used his anger and frustration about the tour, and his overall standpoint in music and the band itself, as well as the traumatic experiences from his childhood, and crafted The Wall. Today, in our final review of Pink Floyd Month, we're going to take a look at one of the most outstanding and greatest albums ever made. Well folks, the time has come to bid farewell to Pink Floyd Month. It's been fun covering some of my favorite albums from one of rock's most tantalizing bands, who made their mark extraordinarily time and time again. But before we go, it's time to cover a lot of people's favorite albums. Yes, I am talking about the 1979 concert album masterpiece, The Wall, which was Floyd's final work that garnered heaps of critical acclaim and commercial success before the band would inevitably, albeit slowly, dissolve by the middle of the 1990s. As I previously stated in the intro, the album was almost entirely created by Roger Waters himself, excepting only minor help and tweaks from producer Bob Ezrin. Together, they would form one of rock music's most influential and groundbreaking concepts that many have tried to imitate or reflect into their own works. The concept of The Wall is as follows. In 1942, a young boy named Pink, who lives with his mother, learns that his father has been killed in the Second World War. Pink was inspired by for former Floyd member Sid Barrett, who became addicted to hallucinogenic drugs and eventually had a mental breakdown, and was also inspired by Waters' childhood itself. The death of Pink's father is reflective of Roger's own father's death in World War II, and this is where the concept of the album truly begins to take shape. Pink's childhood is played with toxic individuals, such as his abusive and almost totalitarian school teachers, and his overprotective mother. As he grows up, he becomes a rock star whose life is tainted with infidelity, rampant drug usage, and violent outbursts. As his marriage finally crumbles before him, and he realizes why his life is seemingly worthless, he finally builds his metaphorical wall that separates him from the outside world. As side three of the album opens, Pink has become increasingly depressed and become frozen to any feeling and emotion. To get him to perform, a doctor medicates him, which results in a hallucination in which Pink believes he is a fascist dictator who threatens and tosses racial slurs at fans that he disagrees with. After coming to his senses and realizing the horrible acts he just committed, Pink breaks down and insists that he's put on trial. As manifestations of his inner demons that plagued his life, such as his abusive teacher, mother, and ex-wife, begin to taunt him, his inner judge, if you will, orders that Pink's wall is torn down, exposing him to the outside world once again. If any of that concept made your jaw drop, you aren't alone. Concept albums have been prevalent since the 1960s, perhaps even the 1950s, but The Wall took such a bleak, depressing, and overall dark concept and warped it into a twisted and chaotic work of art. It was something new, albeit not entirely. It was basically challenging the boundaries of what was acceptable, what was acceptable excuse me, in popular music, as Pink Floyd always had since their inception. Just look at some of their earlier albums, like Piper of the Gates of Dawn and Adam Hart Mother, they're some of the some of Floyd fans' most favorite albums now, but at the time, they were challenging works that were pretty much really disliked because of how different they were. They did not st they stood out in a bad way. They did not stick out like something new or refreshing. They stood out with something new and abrasive. For the Wall, it's their most accessible album in the sense that none of the songs drain longer than six minutes. One of Floyd's big biggest accessibility issues. Excuse me, I've always had a problem with talking. By the way, just so you know, I'm sorry about that again. A lot of Floyd's issues with accessibility is that a lot of their songs are very, very lengthy. They're not very accessible to someone who doesn't have the kind of patience to sit through a very long and very vocally empty track. Thankfully, The Wall is chock full of short, tra well, shorter tracks. My apologies for yawning there. Shorter tracks. And a lot less breaks between vocal pieces it's it's very it flows very seamlessly and very quickly so it's very accessible in that sense it's an album that would inspire musicians like billy corgan of the smashing pumpkins and trent reznor of nine inch nails both of whom had gone on to create two of the biggest concept albums of the 1990s it's so hard for me to put the essence and amount of explosive impact that the wall had on music and myself into words because it's a, mem it's a mesmerizing album that consists of some of Floyd's finest works, 
perfectly exemplified into a poignant and relatable concept that paved the way for Roger Waters' solo career, as well as Floyd's next album and final album with Roger Waters himself, The Final Cut. Some choice songs off this album are In the Flesh Part 1, Under the Brick in the Wall Parts 1, 2, and 3, Hey You, Comfortably Numb, and The Trial. Overall, The Wall has made its stay as one of the most outstanding and brilliant records in the Floyd discography of the 1970s and of all time. Although critical reception was less than pleasurable upon release, retrospective critical acclaim continues to pour in from critics and fans alike. With that, I give Pink Floyd's The Wall a 10 out of 10. Thank you all so much for watching this video. It is greatly appreciated, as always. Guys, I hope you all enjoyed Pink Floyd Month. This was a really, really, really fun time for me. I know the videos were a little bit different than my typical review fashion, and I can understand that that's a little less different in somewhat of a good and bad way but it's just a little experiment that i wanted to do i'm not going to stick to the same format every video every every single video that i make every series that i do i'm trying to branch my t channel out into something a little more it's something a little less restricted i guess is the word to use here i want to branch it out into something bigger and more allow more ideas and creativity for me to flow into it so this is the beginning of that and i hope that you guys continue to enjoy the videos i make from this point on if you've heard this album what you think of it. If you haven't heard this album, I highly, highly, highly recommend you listen to it. Keep your eyes for the next review. Keep your eyes for the next video. Keep being awesome, and I will see you guys later. Take care, everybody.